EA Sports. It's in the game. Back in the day, when you heard this line, you knew that everything was about to be put on the line. Shit was about to go down. And naturally, with the intros, and then the current drivers saying the same thing, catchy popular songs to pump you up, and top of the line gameplay, these games will be remembered fondly. And after the mixed reviews of the Eutechnics games and the Heat series, many are asking, why the hell NASCAR and EA's partnership ever ended? Well, that's what I want to look back at a little bit today, because trust me, there's definitely reasons why they did so. EA as a game company with NASCAR started out releasing NASCAR 98 on Sega and PlayStation. From the get-go, it was generally given favorable reviews, even in its humble beginnings. In the games like NASCAR 98 and NASCAR 99, the basics were put on the game. Damage, wrecks, cautions, crew chiefs, instant replays. You know, basics. The next two games had more base improvements leading into the NASCAR Thunder part of the series. This is where EA really hits its stride and where this series really reaches its peak. This is also where the series sets the gold standard for NASCAR video games. In this span, the Create a Car feature was added, as were Season Modes, the most in-depth career mode in NASCAR video game history, practice sessions, qualifying, legendary driver, split screen play, customizable seasons, thunder plates, lightning rounds, grudges and alliances, and online play. This all was done before the year 2004, as NASCAR Thunder 2004 actually won the best racing game of 2003, the only NASCAR game to ever win this award. Chase for the Cup added to this with the Bush Series, the Truck Series, and the Modified Tour. So up to this point, it's still A-OK. -okay. NASCAR 06 Total Team Control is where things start to go downhill. With the next generation of games in the 360 and PS3 coming up, EA used a new game engine, and this caused major glitching and noticeable drops in quality. Now, this wouldn't be concerning if EA wasn't morphing into a monster. In the early 2000s, EA Sports games were, to quote Kyle Petty, incredible. Whether it was NASCAR, Thunder, or Madden, this era of gaming was a perfect mix of both fun and difficulty. But as this decade rolled into its latter half, leadership at EA as well as the gaming industry itself was changing. Have NASCAR 07 roll around and all the updates you get are motion blur. Outside of gaming, NASCAR itself was also beginning to fall off in popularity. This was obviously seen by EA as they were clearly phoning it in towards the end with NASCAR 08 and NASCAR 09 at the end of the contract. Two games that end up looking and playing like absolute dog shit. Other sports were really taking precedence and the company was at this point done with NASCAR. The 2008 game gave no manufacturers in the game as there were no markings whatsoever while NASCAR 09 began to have the trend that has become a scourge on modern gaming. DLC that you have to pay for because the company had not finished the game yet. So the main premise of this video, the question that needed to be answered, is needing of numerous answers. Where did EA go wrong? The game started going downward with the new generation of consoles that came out. EA, as a company, saw NASCAR as more of a liability than a viable investment. As the company needed to move more towards copy and paste game series, the EA NASCAR series was the complete opposite. It just was not it. A shift in mindset during a change in engine and console generation was a death blow to this series. Unlike Madden, that has a similar tool set to play every single year, NASCAR games will naturally always be changing. Tracks, cars, drivers, and driving styles always will be fluctuating. And adding in NASCAR's popularity loss, it only killed the series more, as the base that would be naturally buying it was continuing to shrink and wither away towards the decade's closing. This altogether is where this series went wrong, the same way NASCAR itself did. The inability to correctly change over time. Just look at EA now. They're nasty when it comes to microtransactions and just everything that the player does not need. It is not very player friendly anymore, the way it was when NASCAR was partnered with them. 
In a way, despite all the successes of the Thunder games and chase for the cup, EA's run with NASCAR was destined to end up in failure. Failure that would eventually be buried by warm and comforting nostalgia that we have now. Because the EA series is both the best and some of the worst that NASCAR games have to offer. But now, I want to pass this subject on to you. Where do you think EA's NASCAR series went off track? Let me know down in the comments below what you think. And if you enjoyed this video, leave a like and subscribe to my channel for more great NASCAR content. And until next time, have a good one.